Hello and welcome to this tutorial on design patterns. Today I'm going to talk about a design pattern called strategy pattern. So first of all, why do we need design patterns? Well, there are a couple of useful reasons. We create a toolbox for programmers. These tools are solutions to design problems that are often encountered but are already solved. Instead of each time you design a program, you have to come up with a brilliant solution to a design problem. You look through the list of design patterns and find the one that will solve your problem. Other people who might not understand your code, you can then explain it to them using design patterns and UML diagrams. So let's talk about the strategy pattern. What problems are we trying to solve using this? Well, an example could be that we have a program that needs to implement different solutions to each customer. You might also uh, need different requirements to your program. That may be in terms of space, speed and so on. So strategy pattern is a solution to switch these different implementations at runtime. Now I'm going to show you an example where we can use strategy pattern in our programming. This is a very simple class, receiving some user input. We use this input to calculate the nth number of the Fibonacci sequence. What this class does is that it calls a method called Fibonacci with the user input. The problem here occurs when we want to add an additional implementation of our Fibonacci computation. In this code what we would do, we would add an additional case called FibFast. What this will is that it will call a new method containing a fast computation of the Fibonacci sequence. That's the method we have written below our main method. What we will do now is that we will compile our program and then we'll run it. Now, if the user inputs 2, we get 1 as we expected, as the Fibonacci sequence is true. The same is true if we use our fibfast function. So our program do as we expect. We see that we can call our two algorithms at runtime, we switch between them without recompiling. We have now two implementations of our Fibonacci calculations. So this way of adding additional algorithms is not ideal. It's very haggy because each time we want to add an additional algorithm, we have to define a new method in our main class. This leads to a very bloated class and an unreadable structure of your program. The way to use the strategy pattern here is that we refactor this Fibonacci method out into an interface. Here we have defined the interface FIP computing. This interface defines a method compute which takes an integer as input. Now we can separate the different implementations of Fibonacci computations in their own classes. We do it here for simple Fibonacci. We just copy the implementation we had in our main class and copy it into the separate classes. Now we can delete the methods that we used and uh, we start implementing the algorithms we have moved to their own classes. From here we make a list that will contain our algorithms. These we instantiate and put into the list and from here we can switch which algorithm to use when we want to compute our Fibonacci sequence.
Now, in case of our user typing fib, we want to, it to call the compute function we defined in our interface on the current algorithm. We set a default algorithm to use when the program starts. This way, the, don't, the user don't necessarily have to decide which algorithm to use. Now we get the result by calling the compute function using the input from the user on the current algorithm. We define a new case for our program input. We say if the user types use, we take the next argument as an index in our algorithm array list. Now we can switch to the given number in our list and use this algorithm's computation instead. What I do here is that I assume that the string method is present in our algorithms to print out alongside the switch of an algorithm. And I add the overwritten methods in the specified classes. Now we'll test how our program acts when we start it up and see if we have any different behavior than we should have. So we see that our new features work as they should and our refactoring haven't changed the behavior of our program. To get some extra perspective of what our program structure looks like, we have made this UML diagram to show what the dependencies are between the classes and interfaces. Our implementation of the strategy pattern is very close to the examples you might find on, for example, Wikipedia. We have the main class. This class instantiates a number of the interface FIP computing. Two implementations of the algorithm are defined, a simple FIP and fast FIP. Both classes implement the FIP computing interface. FIP computing have a method called compute, which simple FIP and fast FIP must inherit. Our main methods are now able to call compute on our instantiated FIP computing, without having to know if it is simple FIP or fast fib. Only the user has to worry about which he or she is using to compute with. Now I would like to discuss a little bit more about what the pros and cons about the strategy pattern is. We state that the pattern is very flexible, very interchangeable. This is due to that it is very easy for us to implement and use a new algorithm without worrying too much about ruining our readability and our maintainability of our program. We also discussed the topic of cohesion. We want to see as little cohesion as possible in a program. This is due to the fact that low cohesion in a program will give us very few side effects when we update either our algorithms and our main classes. We have also seen how easy it is to implement different versions of our program. This could be to different users or customers that we want to see different behavior. The consequences about using this pattern is that we see class explosion. Even in smaller projects we require a lot of classes just to use this pattern. Thanks for listening to this discussion and walkthrough of the strategy pattern. Please write to me if you have any questions or suggestions.